Hi. In certain cases, you want to show translated uh, uh, translated information from, for instance, pick lists directly inside your documents. So uh, we, of course, have the pick list translation data source, but we see with some customers they do not want to work with the translation workbench, or the translation workbench is not functioning in the languages that they uh, that they want. So they are looking for an alternative to the translation workbench for PDF Butter specific. So what we have is a static values data source and a static values data source, you can actually play with the language or the locale that you want to do the translations in. So for instance, if we say, well, we want to translate our, um, our stage, our opportunity stage, we can just create a, st uh, an, a stage name, pick list translation data source, as you can see right here. And in this data source, we're gonna, for each language we want to support, create a translation of this um, of these uh, values that we have. So the values that we have in our example, opportunity is set to proposal price quote. So let's take that example or that value as an example. If you want to be able to translate all of these stages, obviously you have to create a translation for each stage, which you would probably already have assumed. Let's take the value of this one. I'm gonna use the uh, Salesforce inspector to uh, copy paste the value. It's always better to copy paste than to actually rekey it. And I see this is the value, so let's copy that one. Okay, next up, I'm gonna add a row here for Germany, yeah, the German language, uh, for the value of proposal price quote. Click the button, add row. Okay, edit, say that I want to uh, have the proposal price quote. So that's going to be the value of our pick list uh, that we currently have. So that value has to be put over here. And then over here, I'm going to set the translation. Obviously, my German is not that strong. So I'm going to uh, use Google Translate and I say Angebot, price Angebot. Copy paste this uh, and then put it here as the German translation. And then I'm going to go for DE underscore DE, which is the locale for Germany. If I just use DE, then it will actually say, well, for everybody speaking German, that can be people from Austria or people from Swiss, uh, they will also get the, uh, the Ger uh, this translation for Germany. If I just want to say only the people from Germany, so DE underscore DE, which is Germany, then only the German people would actually, or people with German locale would actually get that. So uh, let's go for the real uh, locale. So Germany, DE underscore dot DE. Save this, and now this value is currently there. Let's take a look at the uh, configuration for this. In my configuration, um, I have obviously added the data source stage name picklist translation. Uh, and now also I have set up a uh, conflict type for with the merge field uh, stage name. And I indicated that I want to translate this uh, single conflict type. Now, uh, in the translation, I have to select a pick list. And this pick list is that the stage name pick list translation that I wanted to use. So what the system will now do is when I'm going to generate the document, it will take a look and say which is the locale that I want to use. From that locale, it's going to say, ah, you also want to use this data source. So I'm going to filter out all of the locales or languages that match the uh, the language or the locale of the current user or, or the current uh, uh the current context uh, or the so if you I here I, I, I used a field called locale to do this uh, demo but of course when you have no locale set then it will use this locale of the user so uh, it will filter out all the values now for the ADA in this example and then pass that on to the backend so you can just have in one overview on the static values data source uh, do all the translations of all the pick list values in any language or locale that you want. You can just add them on here as much as you like, add them all here, all the languages and all the locales and all the values that you want to support. Again, when the document is generated, only the ones that are matching the language or the locale of the current uh, context 
being a certain field or being an, uh, the user, the locale of the user will be uh, selected. So here, as you can see, I have the locale DADA. -D -A. And now when I'm go out to generate this uh, document, you would see that it actually will show the German translation of this pick list. If I would change it into something else, let's say I want to go for the English one, then I have an override on the English one here, as you can see. So I selected AN, so that's only the language. And you see that I have this uh, value over here where I set AN as an override. Let's take a look at the, um, at the generation. Yeah, then I have the English one. So, picklist translations via static values data source working just fine.